from the CDC Shanghai branch, Mr. Wu Huayu. First of all, let's invite Madame Wu to introduce the updates. On March the 29th, the newly added confirmed local cases are 326. There were 5,658 asymptomatic carriers, and 17 are in discovered in the quarantine sites. For the others, they were screened in the risky population. 18 were the asymptomatic carriers before. And among the asymptomatic carriers, 5,631 were found in the closed off regions. And for the others, they were found in the risky population's nucleic acid testing screening process. And also there were 116 males in the confirmed cases. And according to the districts, in Pudong there were 119, in Xuhuiju and Baozhang district, 33, in Songjiang district, 15 cases, in Jading district, 9 cases, in Jing'an district, 8 cases, and in Hongkou district, 7, in Huangpu, 6, Putuo District 6, Changli District 3, and Yangpu District 3 cases. In Jingshan District 2 cases, Fengxian District 1 case, Chongling District 1 case. The 326 local cases have been confirmed by the Municipal Expert Panel and added by the Epidemiology Survey and the Clinic Symptoms and the Imaging Results. The 326 people were identified as the confirmed cases, as the mild cases of COVID-19. As to the asymptomatic carriers, if you want to know more details, you can go to our official website for more information. And they were positive in the nucleic acid test after the confirmation of the municipal experts added by their clinic symptoms, the lab test, and the imaging results, as well as epidemiological survey, they were confirmed as the asymptomatic carriers of COVID-19. Up until the 30th, the cumulative cases have identified 35,000 close contacts already, and they were now in control. 29,784 have been tested negative. And there are also some close contacts of the above. The number is 65,000. They were in our control as well. 16,011 people were tested negative already. All the others are being tested. According to the Joint Prevention and Control Mechanism requirement, and considering the situation of the confirmed cases today, the Municipal COVID-19 Prevention and Control Office has deliberated on it and decided that starting from 9 a.m. this morning, Pudong District, Huinan Township, Qingyue Road, number 920, and in Jiangchuan Road of Minghan District, the complex of the factory have been lowered down their risk level to low risk region. For all the other risk areas in Shanghai, they remain the same. Right now, the focal point of the containment is about the new round of nucleic acid testing. We have to ensure that the test sampling, transportation, and submission must be carried out high quality. In particular, the implementation must be carried out in an orderly fashion by avoiding any gathering of population. Besides, we must speed up our transportation of the positive cases to avoid cross-infection. And also, we must solve the urgent needs of the patients, especially the dangerous and risky population. We must guarantee they receive instant help. Considering the actual state of our city, we will take some preventative disinfection in some key 
points, especially in the office buildings, the construction sites, the public places, the transportation means, the residential houses, the agriculture food market, big shopping malls, communities, the old care nurseries and schools, and also the garbage collection sites. We must do more disinfection work in those key points. I have to stress repeatedly that since Omicron has high transmissibility, when our civilians are taking the test, you must keep a distance from the others and wear facial masks in a scientific fashion, especially when we are all staying at home. And if you meet some old friend at home, try to take some protective measures, especially when someone is coughing. We must prevent any cross-infection from any link. Thank you, Madam Wu. Now let's open the floor to questions. Please identify yourself before raising the questions. From the People's Daily. Now in Pudong and Punan district, they have taken two days of uh, nucleic acid tests. Are there any findings up until now? I will take this question. I know this is one of the key concerns of all of us. Since 5 on March the 28th, in the east and the south of Huangpujiang River, we have taken a massive nucleic acid testing. And yesterday, we also organized about 17,000 people by setting up 6,300 sample taking points in order to engage with such a massive testing. Now, in Pudong and Punan and the surroundings, we have uh, completed about 9.1 million tests. In Puxi district, for the non key areas, we also carry out the antigen tests. We have screened 10.87 million samples. Those measures will help us to cut off the transmission of the disease and prevent its further transmission. Today, it's a critical day. On the east side of Huangpujiang River, and um, in the south of the river, there will be a second round of nucleic acid test. I would love to urge our civilians to keep coordinating with our staff to complete this screening. And according to the arrangement in respective communities, there will be several batches of such tests. You must go to the testing points by having a social distance with no gathering no talk among the population, and you must take some preventative measures. I see that some of our volunteers have uh, been part of this event. I advise all our volunteers to protect yourself well by wearing facial masks. If you do have some medical need in the testing process, please come to contact the local village committee or the neighborhood committee or your family doctors to help you out. Finally, I would love to thank all of you for your coordination and understanding. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. And my question is, there will be some disinfection in the key areas of Shanghai. Could you explain the reasons and what will be the actual arrangement? Vice Director Wu will give you the reasons and uh, Director Jin will give you more details about the arrangement. Thank you for the question. The environmental disinfection and sanitation is one effective means to cut off the transmission of COVID-19 by the scientific disinfection in a targeted and effective manner in the environment. We may possibly eradicate the viruses 
and the bacteria in the environment to avoid the transmission of the virus through objects and the population. That is like setting up a firewall. And while doing the disinfection in the environment, we must pay attention that for the patients and the confirmed cases residential houses, there must be regular disinfection. And for the populated areas, particularly in the public places like the airports or the train station, we must raise the frequency of disinfection. For the buttons in the elevator, we must also pay higher attention to its disinfection. For the sewages, we must have some non-hazardous treatment. Meanwhile, pay attention to your sanitation, particularly your hands. There will not be a massive disinfection in the outer environment, particularly through the air. We will not directly spray the disinfectants at people directly. For the ponds, reservoirs, or artificial lakes, we will not uh, throw in some uh, disinfectants. And if there are any people indoors, we will not use chemicals to do the disinfection work. Director Jin, could you please share about the details? As to the environmental disinfection, you've heard some arrangements and principles. And as has been mentioned, the prevention of the transmission through objects and through people is an effective means to cut off the transmission. And according to the requirements, starting from today, there will be a one-month-long preventative disinfection in some key places. For the so-called key places, people are talking about them, there will be 10 prioritized regions. Those places are usually having higher density of population. So we will carry out systematic and comprehensive disinfection, particularly, for example, in the office buildings, the parks, the plazas around the office buildings. And the second prioritized place is the construction site, including the dorm of the workers and uh, the lavatories of the builders. Third, public places. It involves a lot. For example, the Greenland, the parks, the public toilets, and any facilities in the public places. For example, the poles, the mailboxes, the benches, and third, transport, transportation means, for example, bus stations, metro stations, taxis, trains, and so on. Fifth, the agricultural and food market. And sixth, shopping malls. Seven, in the neighborhoods, including the residential neighborhood and some rentals and some small individual stores. Eighth, schools, including the different types of kindergartens and schools and uh, training organizations. Ninth, nurseries. And tenth, the household disinfection. For those prioritized places, the detailed disinfection requirement has been elaborated by the CDC Shanghai branch. They have specified the requirements, for example, for the residential neighborhoods. The key is to disinfect the railings, the speakers, the buttons of uh, the elevators, and so on. There will be two to three times of disinfection per day if they use any moisturized tissues and uh, some other class, there will be detailed requirements, and they must throw those objects into designated garbage bins. And uh, there will be specialized cloths or some spraying bottles to do this work. This campaign will be led by the environmental governance panel, and they will identify the accountability of different entities, for example, Municipal Housing and Construction Commission and Transportation Commission, 
will be responsible for the houses and the transportation. The Greening Bureau will guide the public parks, Greenland, and public toilets, and for the different enterprises and government institutions must hold themselves accountable as well according to the key pointers in the document and set up certain policies of disinfection and intensify their management and protection of personnel. I also want to send out a warning to our civilians. Firstly, this dedicated campaign abide by the principle of not undermining the daily lives of our civilians. For example, we will not to suspend any operation of the buses or we will not cut off for the power. So our disinfection will not hamper the daily activities of our civilians. And secondly, even though every day we carry out disinfection activities, when you go out, you still have to stick to the protective measures. Third, for the indoors, especially what you care about in your houses, do not do excessive disinfection. For the handles and other objects that you touch a lot, do some disinfection, and that's good enough. And also, ensure good ventilation. Open the windows for twice every day, each time lasting 30 minutes and more. We welcome our civilians to call the hotline and respond to us about the dirty environment and the omitted corners so that we can further improve the environment in the city. As to the execution of this campaign, we will carry out some monitoring, and there will be online training of the disinfection work and science promotion oriented to the civilians to guarantee the full execution of this campaign. For the first lecture online, it will be open online at 3 p.m. this today, and uh, it will be published through different media channels for your views, and we welcome you to follow us starting from this afternoon. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. The Liberation Daily. My question is to the Municipal Environmental and Ecological Bureau. There are a lot of uh, the medical wastes right now, so how do you dispose them? And uh, what uh, are the pointers to our civilians when they are doing this disinfection work? Thank you for the question. I know that uh, this is the question in the heart of our civilians. According to the pandemic prevention and control requirement as to the disposal and transportation and collection of the wastes, we have a contingency plan. We have two teams to ensure that every day the medical wastes will be safely disposed and transported. Shanghai has set up three 190 tons capacity of facilities. And uh, in the downtown area, they have the capacity of uh, disposing 12 tons of wastes every day. And we also have the waste incineration manner in order to handle 1,000 tons of uh, medical wastes per day. In any emergency. And we can kick off such a contingency plan at any time. And right now, for the medical wastes collected and disposed, there are three categories. One is about the designated hospitals, the fever clinics, and uh, the quarantine sites will generate some wastes. And the second category are the life wastes and garbages from the quarantine sites. And the third category is the usual wastes and garbages. According to the data up until March the 29th, Shanghai City has disposed 544 tons of medical wastes in the quarantine sites. The total number of wastes take up about 48 percent of the total. I know that you must be concerned about how to handle the wastes coming from the collective quarantine sites. We must package them 
in two layers. And after wrapping them up, we transfer them to designated uh, containment and transportation vehicles. And then the dedicated person, the dedicated vehicle will be put into use to collect this garbage. And then the garbage and the waste will be sent to the incineration plant. And they must be disposed on the same day of collection. For the people involved in this process, there will be a closed loop management. They must take the nucleic acid test every two days. And for the life garbages and wastes in the quarantine sites, dedicated people will collect them to the transfer point and the responsible entity will dispose them every day to dynamically eradicate all the waste and garbages for life purposes. And as you know, different districts are carrying out nucleic acid testing and antigen testing. You must be curious about where are those medical wastes going. For example, in the different sampling points, the medical wastes will be collected by the sample taking organs and for the transported to the hospitals. And the municipal authorities will dispatch dedicated vehicle to send the garbage and the waste to the disposal facilities. And in our buildings, we may find some positive cases. So those positive cases, wastes and garbages will be handled by the hospitals by treating them as medical wastes. As to antigen tests, if the test result is positive, then they are Wastes will be taken as medical wastes. The civilians must uh, handle the sample objects, for example, the reagents and others. They must throw them into certain garbage bins and disinfect with ethanol or any disinfectants with chloride. And if you're tested positive, you must report immediately. And when you are transported to the designated hospital, you must also give those objects and wastes to the hospitals at the same time. But if you are tested negative, then your garbages will be taken as usual life wastes. So we recommend that um, you can put your garbages into the dry garbage bins. So please be reassured. The medical resources and the medical waste disposal system will be going on smoothly and safely. Next question. From Shanghai TV. My question is to the Municipal Health Commission. We know there are different uh, quarantine sites right now being set up. So what is the medical treatment management requirement? And what will be the influence to the surrounding environment? This is another key question. As you know, in the days, the Newly added confirmed cases every day in Shanghai are standing at a high number. The whole medical system right now is under huge pressure, and our medics are working tirelessly. At the municipal and the district level, we have set up some quarantine sites. And for some big facilities, it, they are under construction right now. We have. Uh, galvanized some good medical resources citywide. For example, the Sengyasan Hospital, Reiji Hospital, and the Huashan Hospital, Renji Hospital, Xinhai Hospital, the number six, number nine hospitals, number 10 hospital, Tongji Hospital, and uh, the CDC and uh, others. They have dispatched their medical teams to manage our quarantine sites. and. Uh, offer any medical support and guarantee. Especially in the quarantine sites, there will be some influence of it. 
over the surrounding environment. So we have fully considered about the influence when we selected the sites. We have comprehensive evaluation. We keep a distance with the neighborhood. And according to certain requirements for the medical waste, the sewage treatment, the environmental disinfection will be managed as well. Thank you. Next question. My question is to Professor Wingen. In Shanghai, in the treatment of the infected, what is the effects of TCMs? And as an expert in TCM, could you share with us about uh, some pointers to the civilians from the angle of TCM from Wen Huibao? In the preliminary stage, we discovered that with the application of TCMs, we can shorten the time period of the expression of the symptoms. And we can also help to better control the symptoms. The patients will be in better states. Also, after applying the TCMs, the mortality rate has been reduced among the very risky cases, which proves TCMs are quite helpful in treating the pandemic. As to Omicron, we have formulated the version 9 guideline. So our TCM treatment will be implemented according to that guideline. As to the self-protection of our civilians, by using the TCMs, there are three principles. For example, try to get rid of the fever and uh, have a good caring of your stomach and particularly for the mild cases or the asymptomatic carriers, you can choose some TCM medicine. For example, the lotus antipyretic capsules. Omicron virus can be cured by those medicines. The TCM medicines can help to improve your health conditions. But of course, we do not recommend all of the healthy people to take the medication, because it's after all drug. I know the staff members are very tired and they have to put themselves and expose themselves to the high density of population. In Longhua Hospital, there is another drug, and we put five drugs into one recipe. We recommend the taking of that uh, recipe. Our hospital will send out the recipe to our staff members, and it works. We use very simple ingredients in this recipe, for example, the angeratum and others, and there is no side effect. So pay attention that whatever medication you are taking, there must be no side effect. And of course, 
the ingredients must be preventative in curing or improving your health. So we welcome you to go to the online hospital, Ronghua Hospital. You can ask for this medication. And not just that recipe. You can ask the doctors to prescribe for you in order to improve your conditions of spleen, your stomach, and so on. And for some elderly people and others who are in poor health, if you want to take some preventative measures, what can they do? Go to your doctor and tell him or her that you need some supplementary treatment. So in the prescription of the doctor, he or she will try to do some readjustment in the prescription. Everyone has different health conditions, and TCM is individualized treatment. So your doctor can help you a lot. If you don't want to go to the doctor and you just want to take the medication by yourself, you can try to buy some traditional Chinese medicine that can strengthen your body. For example, you have a dry mouth, or you are in lack of water, or you have a deficiency of vital energy. You can drink something and also try to exercise to improve your health. Do some fitness job. So I think the key for TCM application is to find a doctor when you are sick. And otherwise, on a daily basis, you can try to intervene based on your health conditions. Different hospitals may prescribe different recipes. I can only share with you the Ronghua Hospital experience. Thank you. Next question. The last question. Thank you. From the eastday.com to Director Wu, in the reported cases, there is a higher proportion of the confirmed cases found among the risky population. So what does it indicate? Thank you for the question. Of course, it has a close relationship with the transmission feature of Omicron. Omicron has high transmissibility, and it can be transmitted very fast, and it's secretive. So for the positive cases reported this time, they are mainly the Omicron cases. And um, it can be transmitted 70% faster than Delta virus. Now the BA2 is 60% faster in transmission than BA1. So when we are treating and investigating the cases, we have uh, expanded the scope of our screening among the risky population. That's why we found more positive results among the risky population. And also by cutting the population into different modules, we found that there are regional concentration and also sporadic outbreak. And most of those found cases are asymptomatic carriers or mild cases. Also, for the concentrated outbreak, their transmission channel and uh, the relevant uh, key places and the key population have been screened as well. That help us to improve the proportion of discovery of the confirmed cases among risky population. That's the end of today's presser. If you have any more questions, you can contact uh, the municipal news office or the health commission. We will report to you any update. This is the end of today's presser. Thank you for watching.